What's up guys? Welcome back. So this is the second video of the Guardian Scraper with Golang series. In this video, we're going to take a look at uh, the actual code. So in the first video, we just saw the 10,000 feet uh, view or the diagram of how we're going to approach the entire project. But in this video, we'll actually start coding. And while we're coding also, I'll keep drawing some diagrams so that you know uh, it becomes clear, clear to you exactly what we're trying to do. And uh, so uh, what I recommend is that if you have completed your entire Go tour uh, online and if you know the basics of Golang, then this is the right video for you. If you don't know the basics of Golang, this uh, video can get very complicated because we're going to use channels and go routines in this video and we'll have obviously we'll have structs and slices and uh, maybe interfaces let's see you know whatever so we're basically going to scrape uh, guardian.com which is a very famous website all right so uh, let's get started all right guys so I'm in my terminal right now and what I'll do is I'll increase the size so that you can also see it properly and now what we'll do is, uh, yeah, so I'm in the folder where I usually keep my Go, Golang code and I'm going to create a directory called Golang Guardian Scraper. All right. So let's cd into it. And here, uh, as you know, whenever we start a Golang project, we have to say go mod in it and then uh, whatever the name of the project you want to give. So I'll say github.com slash akhil slash golang guardian scraper. All right. So this is, uh, so if you ls now, you'll see uh, your mod files. This is like your package.json file if you're from uh, a JavaScript background, right? So this file contains the list of your dependencies. And uh, there is one package that we need uh, in this project. Okay. and the name of the package is go query and we need it because we want to uh, convert we want to make requests to uh, guardian and then what uh, the, the response that we get we want to convert it into a searchable document based on which we can run our golang operations right so this is why we need uh, the the go query package so if you if you're not aware of what go query is and what it can do there is uh, a series on my channel it's called scraping using go query a uh, golang go query so you can go and check it out you'll understand completely what go query is and how it works so what we'll do is we'll say go get um, github.com slash for keto slash go query. Right. Now this, if you're uh, from a JavaScript background, uh, this is the equivalent of npm install. And then this is an external package that is not provided by Golang. So it's somebody else's package. With npm, uh, you have in your npm repository, which has all the, the list of all the uh, packages that have been created for Node.js. But the problem with the Golang is that we don't have a, a website like npm uh, .js, right? We just have GitHub, and so everybody hosts their packages on GitHub, and that's how you install them. So it takes a while to get this package from GitHub. Or maybe just my internet is slow. I'll, I think I'll just uh, pause this video and come back. So I'm back. So basically what happened was that I was using the wrong name of the person to get the GoQuery package. The name is actually Perkito Bio with P and B capital and it's not just Perkito, right? So if you write go get github.com Perkito Bio GoQuery, then you'll get this response uh, that it has, it has added this uh, package to your project. When you ls, you'll see uh, go.sum in your project so that basically means uh, that you have now if, if you're from a javascript background that basically is the equivalent of a package log uh, json file which is basically uh, you know all your dependencies but in more details in the sense it has the list of the dependencies of your dependencies in your project as well right so go mod is package json and go.sum is package log.json uh, that's the equivalent and uh, so uh, i've opened up my code editor with uh, i'm using vs code here and now what we'll do is we'll create our main.go file. In our main.go file, uh, whenever you create, so main.go file is the most important file in your entire Golang project, right? Uh, so what you have to do is you have to write package main and import and func main. So these are the three things that you write whenever you create a main file and then func main is the entry point into your entire project. So uh, if you'd seen the first video, we also had talked about this crawl function that we'll have. So we'll have a crawl function as well. 
all right and then we have uh, something called as user agents now whenever you have to make request to a website like go, uh, go guardian.com uh, you have to appear uh, like your computer the bot that is making the request it has to appear as a user so that's why you'll have uh, a slice of strings and here you'll have a couple of uh, user agents uh, sorry not a couple but uh, like five six user agents so f just for reference I have put one user agent here and there will be like five six more of these and uh, when in the fourth or the fifth video of this series so this video uh, this series is going to have like four or five videos uh, in case i've not told you about that so in the fourth or the fifth video i'll i'll copy and paste all the other user agents and then i'll leave the code in github as well so you can copy and paste the user agents uh, in your code so this is what a user agent looks like basically it makes the computer that's making a request look like a browser all right and then we'll have another function that will help us to select a user agent randomly so every request that you make uh, if you can select a random user agent from all the user agents that exist here then uh, you have like very few chances of getting blocked because you're making a request as a new user agent every single time all right in our func main we'll have uh, our base domain Based on basically the guardian.com. So all we have to do is basically go to the guardian.com and scrape this entire website. Alright. So let me explain to you how we're going to do that. We'll have to use uh, channels and go routines. So the first channel that we have, we're going to call it the work list channel. And in this channel, we're going to have basically list of all the uh, links. So the first link obviously will be guardian.com, right? And then we have to run a function called uh, discover links. That will discover all the other links on guardian.com. And then one by one, we'll put all of these lists, uh, all of these links here in work list. And with work list, uh, once, once you have all these links, right, you're going to uh, run a program that picks up uh, links from this work list. So for example, link one, link two, link three. And it's going to further uh, you know find more links discovered links and all these uh, links basically right so one by one by one so it's like a nev never ending uh, loop kind of thing that we're building so that uh, you know you go to guardian.com you discover links you send it to work list and there's a program that picks up uh, your links from work list channel and then discovers more links and adds them to work list and so as in when you keep um, you know visiting these uh, links we'll have a map called scene so scene is a map right let me zoom in and it it'll scene is a map that basically has a URL and it will have a boolean so map with these two uh, values key value pair or like you know so it's a url and then has this link been visited or not so true or false out here so that's how we'll keep a track of uh, all these links as in have we visited these links or not all right so this is what work list is going to do so uh, i think what we can do is we can um, get started so we'll come back to our func main and here we'll create our work list channel so we'll say make channel and this channel um, has links right so it's a slice of string pretty straightforward and now what we'll do is we'll start a routine 
which basically starts off our work list. So how does it start out of our work list? It basically sends the first input to our work list. So HTTPS www.theguardian.com Okay, so what's happening here basically is what you have shown you in the diagram that theguardian.com is the first thing to enter into this channel and that's what this go routine is all about all right so pretty straightforward and then we'll create a map called scene so from this diagram this map right scene map is what we're going to create now so scene make map so it's a key value pair between string which is the url and boolean right which is true and false so now what we want to do is we want to take our work list into another variable. So in our work list, as you know, in this channel, we have uh, the guardian.com as the first link. So we want to take that work list and copy it into another variable called list. And we want to start ranging over this list. All right. Uh, why do we want to range over this list? Because we want to do this basically scene. We want to check if all those links have been uh, seen by Golang or basically we have gone through all those links and we'll mark them true if they're false at the moment right so by default they'll be false and then uh, if they have if the, the link has been uh, you know um, like we have gone through the link then we'll mark it true so that's why we'll take all our entire work list channel into a variable called list and we'll range over list uh, so this video I'm going to keep it uh, short and in the next video i think we'll uh, pick up from where we are leaving right now from this list variable and uh, do subscribe to this channel so that you come to know whenever the next video comes out uh, for this series thanks a lot for watching